I made it up, I made it up I've been around, I hustled up I made it up, I made it up I've been around, I hustled up I hustled up This is Tenjoa family farm. Tenjoa. Yeah. I bought this farm in 2014. Okay. It, it was five hectares. So, but recently I've extended another five hectares. Next door I bought it. So now it's a uh, ten, ten hectares. So Tenjoa, what is Tenjoa? What does Tenjoa mean? Uh, Tenjoa, it's the name of my late grandfather. So what happens is I'm using that name now for my companies and all that. Okay. Yeah, the reason is that we have some sort of a relationship with my grandfather. grandfather. Yes. So you... Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, good. what I've done on this farm is, on this first area, uh, I've decided to do an entertainment area. Okay. Like when I'm with friends, we can use can it. come and have a party. Yeah, so yeah. You see, uh, this swimming pool, when it's summer, we use it, but when it's winter, we just yeah, we leave it, we leave it winter, like that. So. Is why it's dirty like this. Mm -hmm. So, but normally we sit here. I've also opened this place for people who want to do their events, events. and rent. See this area? It's where the VIP VIP is. is. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, this is my entertainment area. It's where when we want to sit with friends, we sit here. So wait. Are you, you love entertainment? You are the kind of guy that loves parties and you love having fun and... No, I'm not that kind of a guy. Actually, the reason I built this is because I don't like going out and all those things. So you so want to bring out yeah, inside? Rather, yeah, <laughs> rather bring it myself in here. Okay. Mm. Okay, this is very beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Very beautiful. And then that side, it's a bomber. Okay, let's go. Mm. We're using it a lot now in winter, this bomb. Actually, most of this area, we're not using it now in winter. We're using the bomb again. The bomber. Yeah, so... How so this is the bomber, the place you see in TV where the burn the fire at night and they tell stories. Yes, and, you know. yes, yes. That is where we talk all our stories. So how it's built is that this is the sitting area. Okay. When the fire is not hot, we, s we put seats okay. so that we can be closer to it. But okay. when it's hot, you just sit down. You just sit down. Okay. Yeah. And then, this is my friend Hodisho. What? My friend Hodisho. Yeah. He's, he's one of the family members here in the farm, actually. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. This is my great, great, great. camping trailer. Okay. This is his trailer. Oh, so you guys go camping together? Uh, yeah, I've yeah. never been in a camp alone. <laughs> <laughs> I've never Travel been in a camp. Together with yeah. So now, this is from... It's from the planting? In Leidenberg. In Leidenberg. So what else do you make apart from Millie Mill? Mm, meat. Any meat you can think of, I make it here. Any veg you can think of, I planted that veg. Like all the food. Is it? Mm. Wow, okay. Yeah, so what is happening here? I will show you. We have a small garden. Okay. Where we are planting. All right. But most of the things we're doing is in the lighting the farm because that farm is it's bigger. It's, it's very big. And these ones are, are they like waste, uh, millimeter or what? No, no, this is what we use. For this, that's what they create the animal feed with. with. Yeah, okay. So these guys, the process is that they will mill all this together. And it's it mixture of your grass and your yellow meal and yeah, all that yeah. filled work. So you package it together and you put and you make it for a people. For the okay. And animal loves it basically. Okay. Ah. You go down. So yeah, so what happened, this is what is coming as a way. Oh. But it's actually not a way, it's what animals will eat. Oh. What is going in here is it's a food. food. It must be clean. It's what people will eat. Oh. So there's no way to oh. 
Why do you see his waist? He's not. Ooh. Okay. Why you see his waist now? Is that your 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 thing? This is the packaging. Yeah. No no no. Just oh, they are just. Oh. Take on it, sir. Ah, no. So. Here. Oh. Okay. There we go. Milli mill, done and dusted. I'm an official milli mill maker. <laughs> okay. So, Millie Mill doesn't go through a lot of process, like, it's just thing in the, the maze, that's all. So, Millie Mill goes through a lot of process where you buy it. This is a natural one. There's no process. It's just natural as it is. So now, this one, if I make it, will it make proper pap? Yes. How what does the pap look like? Can you can we make a pap like this and see how it looks like? Yeah, they'll be making a pap, I'll show you. you show me? Yeah. Gentlemen, welcome once again to a new episode of Us Without with Joseph Minley. Today I'm with two amazing gentlemen, Mr. Mashile and Mr. Nguenya. Uh, they are farmers, they deal with crop and uh, animal farming. And the amazing thing is they also do milli meal, yeah, the organic one. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Mr. Mashile and Mr. Nguenya. Thank you, no, we are fine. So, uh, you guys have been friends for how long? For, for as far as 20 years back, if I may say so, okay. when we were graduate from uh, university, um, he was coming from the side of KwaZulu Natal, I was coming from Gauteng, and we were um, bazaar holders of the provincial government in Pomala. And we met at a time when we were given opportunity as training engineers. And our relationship started then and grew to be friends. And we, when we, we, we sitting together, we're friends, okay. but when we doing business, we're strangers. And we are buddies, we travel Africa, we, we do camping quite a lot. We do quite activities, sporting, we cycle. There's just many that I, I will take the whole day actually to mention, but yes. And my friend, he's, a, he's quite, quite another interest that he's exploring, which is farming. And I'm a much just supportive friend. <laughs> <laughs> so you are not into that much into farming? A little bit. Not, no, no <laughs> not, not like him. He's a farmer, let's say so. So, Mr. Uh, Nguenya, uh, you studied engineering. Yes. Will it be agricultural engineering? No, civil engineering. So, from civil engineering to agriculture, where did the bridge come from? Well, I would say it started from, uh, you see, I wanted to explore more on what I'm eating, what do I want. And then I fell in love with organic food. 
So, but now I wanted to buy organic food only to find that organic food is very expensive and it's not much, there's no one producing organic food. So from there I said, no, 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 I can do this thing myself. So that is when I said, no, I must find a place now to do my organic food. Then it's when I bought this farm in 2014. So it started small because I was doing it for my own consumption. But the problem is that when you plant, you don't plant one spinach, you plant 100 spinach and you can't eat 100 spinach. So from there the business of farming started. Then I could see that no man, there's money on farming. And now I can control what I'm eating, I know what it is, and a lot of people fell in love with organic food. Then from there I said, no, let me take this farming thing. Mm. It's all about the farm. That's good, that's good. So when you when you started, when you bought the farm, I'm sure you, like, you don't just buy, you take uh, 50 rand and buy a farm. Did you get some, a little bit of a boost funding to... to no, what happened is when I was buying the farm, I had already, remember I'm working, I'm a civil engineer, professional one, so I had already made savings. I already made money, and then I also have a house which I built case. So what I did, I sold the house to the bank. Then I bonded my house, I took the cash money and bought the farm cash. So when I was buying this farm, it was just a bush, yeah, nothing. Then you developed? Then I started developing. Wow, wow, wow. So, uh, you are a civil engineer. You had no knowledge of, about farming at all. Who taught you how to farm? Who taught you about farming? Now, what I can tell you is that we as Africans, we have knowledge of farming. From where we grew up, there was farming. For each and every African child, there was farming at home. That small garden at the backyard, that is farming. It's just we didn't know that it's farming. So I said to myself, I knew that we were putting spinach at home, we were putting cabbage at home, that is farming, that is how I started. But now when you start doing it, you attend some courses, now you want to gain more knowledge because you want to go commercial and all that. So you get trainings and all that. You definitely didn't grow up in Santi, where did you grow up from? No, I grew up in Matsuri, township in Matsuri. <laughs> uh, I'm a township boy. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay, that's okay. good, that's good, that's good. So tell me, what challenges did you face as a farmer? There are a lot of challenges. For example, in this farm when I started it, there was nothing. Just bush? Bush. First we have to build a road. Now, for any farming activities, we need water. It's just a bush. There's no water coming in here. There's no municipality coming in. That was the first challenge. Now I had to drill a borehole. So now I was also using my civil engineering skill in the farming. So I drilled bohol now to have water. Water is the biggest challenge we have here because I even supplement it, we buy water from the municipality, the water truck comes in. So I would say the biggest challenge here in facing is water. So tell me, uh, in terms of infrastructure, you spoke about, spoke about building a road and, and all these things. I know that the government is trying to push people to go into farming because obviously farming is the future and stuff. Is there some sort of assistance from the government or how do you guys get your infrastructures? Does the government say, okay, listen, if a farmer, we probably subsidize your, you know, your cost in terms, is there any, like in terms of building of infrastructure? Uh, I would say it's supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. But to tell you from this farm, I've never got any assistance from the government. Never, nothing. Everything I'm doing here, I'm doing from my own pocket. So even the infrastructure, I will say it's a little bit easy for me because I'm using my civil engineering knowledge to do it. But uh, there's no assistance from government. It is only now when I have started that now they will be sending their people from agriculture. Now they start to assist you in terms of the farming, what to put and what. They, but in terms of infrastructure, I will never got assistance. Nothing. Okay. Good. Uh, in terms of, uh, obviously now with COVID-19, economic constraints, people are crying about money and whatever. How has that affected you as a farmer? Like in terms of your clients, do you, do you design any reduction in customer base? No, no, what I can tell you is that on COVID, it was our benefiting time. Okay. <laughs> so on COVID we were benefiting because most shops were closed now. Yes. So we were the only ones left. So. All, all, but basically, my clients, I'm not competing with anyone because 
I'm selling organic food. The people who come here, they want organic, organic food. food. It's what they can't find on any other shop. So on my clients, I'm not competing with anyone. Uh, COVID has not affected us. They, they are, there's nothing. It's because most of our stuff, it's organic, it's natural. So there's nothing that I would say maybe we, we needed it, we could not find because of COVID. COVID didn't affect us. Good, good. So you spoke about uh, traveling and uh, touring around and, uh, you know, having fun. So what is uh, what do you love doing the most? Um, look, it's, it's more of exploring. And here's the, the very interesting part. We travel most in African countries where some of the areas we get to, plowing for subsistence is their honor of the day. And that's where my friend has more interest to spend time to look at how they do that, how they like. Recently, we were in Tanzania. We spent quite some time in Mbeya. And uh, flew or what? No, no, we drove. We do off-road drives. Okay. We, we drag trailers all around. We camp everywhere. We, we don't sleep in hotels. Okay. We can't afford the luxury. <laughs> 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 oh, you don't want to. <laughs> no, we can't afford it. <laughs> we can't afford it. So, yes, then what's interesting is that there are a few lessons we learn. Um, I'm, I'm, I have my interest. He has all his interests. But somehow we find each other some of the things like when he goes into areas where they are doing farming, where we camp, we spend nights, we sleep in coffee farms, we sleep in rural areas where they are breeding goats and all that. It's where he picks some of this interest and you realize, oh, you gotta hold on and spend time. He has to learn. He's a friend. For me, I'll do other things that interest me a lot. But there's quite a lot that I can mention that you know, traveling around. We, we've been. Mozambique, Swaziland, Malawi, Tanzania, Zambia, Botswana, Namibia. You, you all driving. Driving. We all driving. Uh, As for the country, we've covered it. There's no way I would say we haven't been wow. in South Africa. Wow. In our neighboring state, there's no way we in Sadek mostly, except um, if you throw up Angola. We haven't been twice. We've, we've all been around. Wow. So we, we're picking up some of these lessons he, he says. You know, like when he was designing this roofing of this thatch, he saw much of it interest in the African countries, how they do it. And, and he comes in there, and of, obviously, of course, our engineering background helps and assists. But like I said, what you see at the farm, how they keep it sustainable and all that, he picks up those lessons into it. And so, so are you still in civil engineering? Yes, um, um, we are both practicing. You're in, still practicing civil yes. engineering? Mm, we, so the farming is just... We actually operate in different uh, companies. He has his own, I also have my own, but somewhere we interlink, like I said to you, when it comes to business, we are strangers. Things are kept formal, there's no friendship there. Like, he's owing me some jobs to do, he knows it, and it's, it's that. Pretty Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you, you will see, some of like the farming he's, in, he's talking about, he, he will tell you about, even the cooking, I'm interested in cooking. Okay. Much of the, Food that I prepare is actually from the soils that he, he plows. So if he goes dig up potatoes, baby potatoes, he brings us, I take it to the kitchen. And I become fancy and put that. That's what I do and that's what I enjoy. Okay, wait, listen. Ladies must be after you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Are you married? Yes, I'm married. And yes, I'm, I'm, not. <laughs> I'm not. So why why did you get married? Like and why are you not married? Okay. Is it, do you ask someone else why did you get married? No, no, no. <laughs> you don't ask someone why did you get married? Why are you not married? Look, uh, it's a question I answer him every day wherever we sit around the fire. I think he ran out of topic to ask me that. But, like I said, um, I, I normally put it this way. Marriage is a calling. You don't just wake up saying, please call me and say, marry me. <laughs> it, it's, it takes like him as a committed man as what... It, it's, it's not like there's a... a a way or a determined period or in the age where you must be. For me, you still enjoying yourself. You still no, fun. not not anymore. Not anymore. I would love to get married very soon, and yeah, I would love to be. Are you uh, single? Are you in a relationship? Let's keep that. Ah, for the <laughs> <or on. laughs> Let's keep that for the comments. Okay. Imagine farmers out there, right? We've got a lot of people in the locations that, like, in the township that they want to become a farmer. But there is this, there is this uh, perception that farming is for a certain group of people or a certain age of people. Or, but since you, as a young uh, black uh, man, you know, into farming, what 
uh, advice or what would you, information would you want to pass out there to emerging farmers? No, oh, what I can tell emerging farmers, oh, by the way, I'm still an emerging farmer. <laughs> but okay. what, I, what I've seen is that people, they, they want a lot of support from government, they don't start their thing, they wait for government. But I can say if you're an emerging farmer, don't wait for government, government will find you on the road. So start small. Don't want to start by plowing 10,000 cabbages because you won't have market, you won't have anything. Start by plowing five cabbages. Your market will be yourself, your neighbor, and the other neighbor. So I'm always preaching this. Start small. Then you won't need any funding for your business. You start small, then you grow big. That is what I can advise to imagine for us. I've started small. I'm, I'm not big. I'm going to be big. You still not big. Uh, you've got ten big. acres here, then you've got mm -hmm. another on that side, but you still not big. No, I'm still not big. What is your dream? When will you be big? You see, my dream is to feed at least 1,000 families in a month. Like I want to have a group of 1,000 families eating only my food, organic food. That is my dream. How many do you have now? Plus minus? Minus 20, 25, wow. 30, they grow, sometimes they don't. So what I want to do myself is to do my own abattoir where I'll be processing the meat. Because currently what I'm doing now, I produce the animal, I have to take it to abattoir. They charge me, it goes back to butchery. So now I want to do my own abattoir. In my own abattoir, I'll process everything and then send it direct to the because I want us to cut the middlemen. Mm. Yeah. So my dream is to sell direct to the people, but it's organic food. Okay. So uh, people, they obviously want to know how to get to the view, social media, uh, email. How can they get to the view? Okay. Yeah. Man, it's very simple. I'm um, on two social media. Yeah? Okay. I think they are lot, but I'm on Facebook. Okay. It's my name, Pumele Longoya. Okay. I'm also on WhatsApp. My number is zero eight two. Five seven double nine three one three. Don't worry, I'm not scared of it anything. Is. On the number, you can call me. <laughs> I've, I've used this number from I don't know since from, forever. Since forever, people have harassed me. But what I've learned is that they stop after that. Oh, okay. And then yeah, my email address is mgmgwenya at gmail dot com. Okay, thank you. So for yourself, your social media. Um, I'm. Also, my name is Mashile on social media. I'm, I'm almost in all the platforms from Facebook to Instagram. And we also have a page for our uh, traveling activities. It's Tenjam Kwenyani, uh, uh, 4x4 extra, uh, Explorers. Come again? Tenjam Kwenyani, 4x4 okay. Explorers. Okay. Yes. So if you want to join, you can tag along. Yes, we can tag along. We advertise our trips. We invite friends for those who want to explore. And we, we, we package it how it will suit. Okay, good. awesome. Thank Ladies you. and gentlemen, thank you for watching this episode. I hope you've learned a lot. See you next time. Cheers. So